Let us learn assertions in JMeter and I am going to go very basic step by step. So assertions in JMeter are the checks on the request and response and mostly it is the checks on the response. So you can check the response code, you can check some particular data in your response, you can check the response time, duration, size etc. So in JMeter we have all these different types of assertions that you can use to check your response. Let us see all these common assertions in JMeter. I will go to my JMeter and this is the test we created in the earlier session. Uh, let me just go and disable all these listeners. I will select everything. I am pressing shift and down arrow key on my keyboard. Do a right click and I will say disable. I can also delete all of these but let me just keep view results tree and view results in table and I am going to clear everything. In my thread group I have five users ramp up period five seconds and loop count is one and this is my request i am going to this website lifecharger.org and going to this page two minute rule uh, in the last session i had changed the look and feel from options look and feel and i had made it windows but if you want you can just go back to the earlier dark theme so let us start with response assertion now in JMeter you can create your assertions at different levels like at a test plan level, at a thread group level or for a particular request or a sampler. Let us say if I add it at a test plan level I can do a right click add and go to assertions and I can add any of the assertions from here and that will be applicable to every sampler that is in this test plan. Now if I go at a thread group level and add the assertion that will be applicable to all the samplers of this thread group and if I go to a request and then do a right click and say add the assertion it will be applicable only for that particular request. So let me say for this request I want to add a response assertion and if I select response assertion you will see here we have got the name of the assertion and you can change it. Here we have option to apply it to main samples and sub samples, main sample only, sub sample only or we can also use a JMeter variable. I will teach you about variables later and here we have options to select the fields you want to test. So let us say I want to test the response code and here I will go and set the pattern matching. If I want to check contains matches equals substring not or I will say equals. So in simple words I am saying response code should be equal to whatever pattern I give here. So I will click on add and I will say I want to check response code is 200 and that's it. I will save and now I will run and if I go to my view results in tree listener you can see everything is fine everything is running and everything is passed. Let me add some different pattern to test. I will say here 201 which should fail and I will save and now I will clear and run the test again and let us see this time what happens. You can see we have got a failure and if I expand this and see response assertion you will see it received 200 but it was expecting 201. Also if I add a assertion let us say I add a assertion or I, sh I add a listener for assertions so we have a Assertion results listener and we have already learned about listeners in the earlier session and I can also bring it up So if I now clear and run my test again, you can see here we are getting the Responses and it is a failure if I go to assertion results here I can see only the results for the failed assertion so you can see all this is failing if I go back to my response assertion and make it back to 200 and save and now if I go and check if I run this now you will see here we are getting the results if I go to assertion results you will see there are no assertion failures here so this is a very simple response assertion and this is the most and widely used assertion in JMeter and you can use it for response code or to check any text in your response all these options you have here then let us see the duration assertion. So here I will go and add assertion and I will say I want to add a duration assertion and here you can see we can select or we can give the duration in milliseconds and if any sampler 
takes time more than whatever we give here it will be a failure so if i see as of now i am getting a response time somewhere around 1000 to 2000 milliseconds if i go to my duration assertion and i say i am keeping a threshold for 1500 milliseconds so any request that takes more than this time should be shown as a failure i will clear and run and if i see my view results tree here you can see some requests are passing but some have failed if i see the failure and here it is due to duration assertion and it says that the operation lasted too long it took 2298 milliseconds but should have not lasted longer than 1500 milliseconds the same i can see in the assertion results as well so whenever you want to check if your samplers should not take some uh, should not take time more than some specific duration you can add a duration assertion then we have size assertion again this is a commonly used assertion if i do a right click again on my request and add assertion and say here size assertion here you can see you can add it to all these samples and then we have to select the response size field to test do you want to check the full response or only headers or only body or only response code or only the response message and here you can give the bytes so let us say if i check how many bytes i am getting as of now so i am getting here around uh, 42000 bytes and i will go here to my size assertion and if i say something like uh, 42 thousand and now here i have option should it be exactly equal to this number or not equals to or greater than or less than or greater than equal to or less than equal to let us say i am saying it should all be less than or equal to this size all the sampler size should be less than equal to this number and now i will go and clear everything and run my test again and let us see the output so we can see some failures if i go here this failed both due to duration and size assertion and you can see the size was 42897 bytes but it should not be more than 42000 bytes and i think most of these failed due to size if i see the assertion results you can see most of these are the failure due to size assertion let me go and say i'm saying that it should not be more than uh, 44000 bytes and now i will check again let me see if this time we get some pass and yes we are getting all this is running fine and yes now everything is running fine so this is how we can use a size assertion then we have html assertion so i will add this assertion called html assertion now here if you see it will actually check the html against the standards formatting and syntax of a html document and here it also tells us do you want to add some error threshold and warning thresholds that means how many errors are expected and you should not fail in case the errors are less than this number and similar for warnings this is the threshold and if i do not give anything and run my test case you will see here i am running my test case or running my test plan and you will see everything is a failure and if you see html assertion it is saying there is a assertion failure which is can't pass argument number and here if i see the assertion results this is the same thing i will go to assertion html assertion and let me give some error threshold let us say 10 here and 100 here and i will now again run this and if i see the view results in tree again i am getting a failure and if i see html assertion so here i am again getting this now what i can do is i can actually write the report to a file and i can say here i will browse and let me just go and use something on my desktop let me say or i will create a text file on my desktop i will say new text document and i will say report 1.txt and this is what i am going to browse on my jmeter so i will say go to desktop and use report 1.txt and i will run it again clean and run and once this is done i will go and check my report 1.txt 
and you can see all these errors and warnings here so you can see everything is here so this is basically checking your HTML or the HTML of your response against the standard syntax and in case it finds anything wrong against the standard it will show you the results and can also log the report in a text file now here most of the times you may not want to validate the HTML assertion however in case your application needs to talk to any other application or needs to interact with third-party applications you should take care of these HTML warnings and errors and you can discuss with your team and similarly you can also do a assertion on XHTML format or XML format of your response so this was the HTML assertion then we have assertions for XML and JSON in case you have a XML or JSON response which mostly you will have in case of API and web services then you can use these assertions we will learn how to test APIs both SOAP and REST in JMeter in the coming sessions but here if I go and go to the assertions you can see here we have a JSON assertion and if I add a JSON assertion you can see you can check here if the JSON path exists I will tell you about JSON path when we deal with a REST API having a JSON response you can also match a regular expression you can then check on this particular JSON path if you want if you are expecting some particular value you can add the value here and then you can do a JSON assertion and then similarly if I add a assertion for XML there's a XML assertion as well and here as well if you have a XML response it will check for the formatting and syntax according to the standards for the XML and then uh, if I add another assertion we have a XPath assertion we have XML schema assertion as well now XML schema is you can test your XML against some schema that you have added in a file let me show you if you go to uh, if you just search for XML schema by Raghav Pal you will see a video you can see this is my video XML schema and you can see exactly what is an XML schema, how do you create it and you can also get an XML schema from an XML. So just in case you want to know more, you can check this and then uh, this is how you will give your XML schema file here and your XML will be tested against this schema. Then I will tell you about XPath assertion. So as we have JSON path, you have XPath for XML documents. So you can give some XPath here and then you can validate your XPath. You can also check if that particular location has some value. All that you can do for a XPath or a XML document. I will show you this again when I when we deal with XML responses for API testing. So these are all the commonly used assertions in JMeter and I hope now you can very confidently use all these assertions in JMeter. I hope this was useful for you. Thank you for watching.